over um, if it does disappear. Anyone step in, please. <clears throat> You're on mute, Sister V. Oh, pardon me. Sorry, I thought with the song or something. <laughs> all right. So if you can all hear me, I will make a start. Apologies for that. Um, let us start with a word prayer, please. Could I take it for us? Yeah. Let us pray, dear Lord. Thank you for blessing us today. You know, the other school and divine services we have had. Now, Lord, as we come to the end of this, towards the end of the Sabbath and study Adventist form, please may you continue to be with us, guide us and lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Feki. So we have so far been looking at the family structure um, and now we have started looking at the children uh, in the family. And so we continue with chapter 31. Uh, last week was chapter 30, family companionship. Chapter 31 is security through love. So I'm not sure if the twins are trying to share the reading. Able to, yes, I'll just I'm just putting in getting in the device to do that. Yes, okay. Uh, security through love. Our first subheading is the street. So we're in the home and I want to look at what is it that the home steady keeps that home in, um, in position, but not only that, it keeps that home going. And what are the principles, especially with all those that are involved in the home circle? So we have, of course, the marriage circle, the sacred circle, the husband and the wife, and now we're inviting children in where there are children. How do we now deal with them? How do we invite them uh, in the family circle? So as we want to be um, shared, I will read and then we will then read it again just to um, emphasize. It says here, agencies have wonderful power for they are divine. The soft answer that turneth away wrath, the love that suffereth long and is kind, of sins, would we learn the lesson with what powerful healing would our lives be gifted? How life would be transformed and the earth become a very likeness and face of heaven? Last agencies have a wonderful power, for they are divine. What does that mean when you hear the statement? Love's agencies, so first we need to know what those agencies are, have a wonderful power, for they are divine. So we're looking at the agencies here, looking at what they can do if they are different, and where they come from, the store of the agencies. All right, thank you very much, Antitokris. Let's read that again. Love's agencies have wonderful power, for they are divine. The soft answer that turneth away rough, the agencies, the love that suffereth long, and is kind, 
and the charity that covereth a multitude of sins. Would we learn the lesson with what power for healing would our lives be gifted? How life, how life would be transformed and the earth become a very Further down, the first paragraph. Here we go, that's it. All right, how life would be transformed and the earth become a very likeness and foretaste of heaven. So this is heaven coming down on earth. But in order for heaven to come there are agencies that work within family circle so that we can experience what we like. All right. So what are we hearing from this? What are we learning? What jumps out at you when we talk about love's agency and the power of love's ministry in the home? Anyone? I think, Sister V, this is these agencies are. I think these things are things like forgiveness, grace, grace, compassion, uh, yeah, those are the three I can think of at the moment. These are some so of we the have... yes. Those are the three I can think of at the moment that come into this group or called love agencies. Because if you look in heaven, these are some of the things that we receive from heaven. Whether we are obedient or not. There is still grace, there is still forgiveness, there is still compassion. So I think these are some of the agencies that the passage is talking about. Without these, you're saying the family is going to be a foretaste of heaven, the family home, forgiveness and compassion. Mm -hmm. So much experience these things. Not of these. Do we see? the You're breaking up, Sister V. Can you hear me? So I'm having no. We, we 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 didn't hear your your question. Oh dear. <laughs> Let me see if I can reposition. I can't move anywhere else, I'm afraid. Right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. All right, let's try here. So, love's agencies, Brother Mfeki, you mentioned love, compassion, and forgiveness. Now, for those that might have experienced some of these, what does that We've all been children before. Um, what does that uh, look like? What do some of these um, agencies look like? And how did they frame who you are as a person today? Or how did they make your home life look like, if that makes sense?
I mean, if you if you if you if you think of in terms of oh, so please go ahead. Sorry. If you think of in terms of uh forgiveness, we all do something wrong every day. But the fact that you can be forgiven and be accepted, even though you've done something wrong, brings to the child a sense of belonging. The fact that people can show you love without you having to work for it, but simply because you are a member of that family, gives the child a sense of belonging, a sense of whole being. And the fact that things are done for you, not because you have done something and you are getting a reward, but simply because you are a member of the family, somebody takes the time to spend with you. Somebody takes the time to make effort to do things for you, some of which you did not even ask or requested or were aware that you need. That will answer to this foretaste of heaven. Thank you. Belonging. And I, any of us, I think, um, and when we see most of our children, one of the challenges that they have, or we might have had in our, uh, in our adulthood, but adulthood, but uh, definitely when we're um, in our, is the sense of belonging. We need that. There's a certain desire within us that wants to, we are driven to the place where we find that welcome that inclusion, sometimes it's the wrong places. Uh, oftentimes it might even be the wrong places rather than sometimes, or our peers. And so it's telling me that when we see that, that usually something is going on, something is missing or an invitation of the children in the home that is a drive that child person away in the direction of, unfortunately, sometimes wrong, but in the right place hopefully so with that being the case then we all we can all identify that we need we desire uh, to belong somewhere to feel as part of something or of some of a group of people family how do we do this you know sometimes you know if we're going to speak reality our children do things or can do things, or we ourselves, if we look back, have things that really can grate the parent on. Oof. <laughs> they can basically get to your last nerve. Let us be real. Okay. In those moments, <laughs> we're talking about love, forgiveness. Statement was that the agencies of love are are these things that come easy to us as parents have we seen this have we experienced this because some of our children or some of us have done some real extreme things that will challenge even it's not something you can do sister it's, it's not something you can you can develop yourself. If we are talking what the passage is, is describing here, if we are talking about what this passage is describing here, you can only have these through the grace of God yourself. In other words, you, God has to teach you before you can go and teach somebody. You can do go and practice it on somebody else. Because you cannot give what you do not have. So for you to understand forgiveness, God has to forgive you first. And teach you what forgiveness is like with you. Then you can go and do it to your own children. Compassion. God has to teach you compassion. First. By him showing you compassion. Or you showing you love. Then you can go. And do it to your own children. But you can never do it if you have never been taught yourself.
Sister V, are you still there? I think we've lost her, brother. Is she gone? Yeah, it looks that way. Oh. She's not in. Is he trying to join me back in? Has she come back in? Not yet. Why are we waiting for Sister V? Can somebody turn to 1 John 3, 16 to 18? One John 3, 16 to 18. One John 3, verse 16 to 18. Mm hmm Okay. Uh this is how we know that love is Jesus. Christ laid down his life for us. And mm -hmm. we are all to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has a material possession possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God in that person, how how love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and with hope. Yes. You see, you see how we should love? Because this is what Sister V was asking. This is what I was trying to say to you. You see how we should love? We should be laying down our lives for the brethren. Why should we be doing that? Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for them, God. Now you've got to think of it this way, saints, when we are dealing with our own children. While we, didn't, while we did not even know what to do or how to get out of the mess we were in, God saw our situation, then took action to help us deal with our situation, to get us out of the situation we were, we had gotten ourselves in. So if we are to do this, this is what I'm saying, you can't give what you do not have. If we are to do this, so that our homes become a foretaste of heaven, we have to do the same process that God did for us, but we now have to apply it to our own children. Because while a child may not know how to get out of the mess they've gotten themselves in, you should do. If you don't, you go back to Christ. He knows. Then he tells you how to help your child who cannot help themselves. That's great, saints. That's dealing with this. Then in that case, that home now becomes a foretaste of heaven. Now I don't know whether any, has anybody tried this in their own house?
Sim. Okay. Sisters, can you raise it up so we can go to the next passage while we wait for Sister V? Yeah, the pressure, yeah, there. How do we teach these lessons to little children? How can we teach this to little children? I'm assuming here you have dealt with little children, or you have looked at the little children, or you have had little children, or you have interacted with children. How do we teach them these lessons? Or how can we teach them these lessons? By showing them love and telling them to be loving and kind to others too. What would be the best way to do that? By loving other people. By example. Uh, by, by showing, yeah, by loving other people, yeah. Yes, somebody else. Yeah. So, well. And by loving them too. Yes. And if you are a husband and a wife loving each other as a family. In the home. In the home, yeah. So we, we all know that children, they learn best. Uh, from what they are saying, mm -hmm. not from what you are telling them. So if you are telling them something and you are doing the different thing, uh, then you are lying to yourselves that uh, you are teaching your children something. So you are teaching them to 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 not 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 to be honest. Yes, yes. Because if you are doing something, you are saying something, and you are doing something different that they are learning from what you are doing and seeing the difference from what you are saying, then they know dad is lying or mom is lying. Mm -hmm. Very easy to teach your child how to lie, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Then what's wrong with my child? You need to ask yourself what's wrong with you. <laughs> Somebody else? What's the best way sense of teaching our little children some of these things? Or our kids, some of these. We've had one the brother has already given us. Uh, somebody else, another way. Bye. What is, yes, pardon? Yes, sisters. By example, living the life. Yeah, by example, living the life. What are other ways saying? Oh. I was going to say, um, I agree with everything that's been said. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going to say that we need to, it's like a little baby. So, mm -hmm. we, for instance, we've got a one-year-old at church recently just turned one now do we go over to that one-year-old and speak to her like it's an intellectual like it knows english and what have you or knows a language or understands what we're saying no we we go over to the baby and we speak to it with goo goo gaga and you know we we act all silly mm -hmm. like a child and i think we need to bring ourselves down to at the child's level and um i think if we do that we connect with them better and they appreciate us more they understand us more and um, I, I just feel that they they connect with us more. And and once we do that, and we show them this loving, uh, uh, kind personality that we should be, I think then they're more willing to um, look at us and to um, not only have trust, but have some respect for what we say, um, especially if we teach them to do to do right and we do right in our lives and we lead by example so my point being is that we need to bring ourselves down to their level so we bring ourselves down to their level okay sister i hope you had your hand up i just totally agree with brother paul we have to let have to ask for that spirit of humility to come down to their level so even their babies, as our brother was saying, we behave like babies. But as they mature, but, but I think the most important thing as well is to getting them involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we get them involved. 
we know that even um, getting them involved is getting them to be to take responsibilities, and that is yes, love. yes, mm -hmm. right. So as as young as they are, and if they're able to mess up, they're able to tidy up. Yes, but you tidy up with them. Yeah, just leave it Man. to them. <laughs> As our brother was saying, that uh, we become good examples. So mm -hmm. you you work together as a family. You work together. As they they grow up to another level, you level up with them. And particularly us mm -hmm. who have got mm -hmm. now, uh, uh, who think they know it all. And how do you deal with them? Still with love, right? You have yeah. to have rules. You have to have boundaries. You have still have to be firm. And that is what love is. And this is what they're looking for. Because if we don't do it in our homes, the world will do it outside. Yes. They'll go for the world. But we have to 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 um uh, um and allow them also love. You allow them to make choices. They might be bad, they might not be the right choices, but they have to learn by making those wrong by 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 their own. Uh, 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 by making their own choices, they learn good and bad, and that is what love does. Love, you give them choices. Christ has given us choices, isn't it? As as we are growing up and we are growing up and still learning, our children will also do the same. But they have to learn the consequences of good choices and the consequences of bad choices, and that is what love is. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Let's read uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, saints. There was two hands up there, brothers. Sisters. Yeah, and then I'll go to the hands. If we do Matthew right. chapter 15, verse 8, then I'll come to brother Tabuda and I think somebody else. What does it say, Matthew 15, 8? 15 verse 8, it reads, mm. These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honored me with their lips, but their heart is far, far from me. Right, saints. Let's, let's, let's look at this. As a group of believers, what is our biblical name? Christians. Yeah, we are Christians, but as, as Seventh-day Adventists, what is our biblical name? The remnants. The remnant. The remnant. The remnant, saying. What are the remnant known for, according to the Bible? Those who keep the commandments of God. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the remnant live under a certain type of uh, uh, law and it is that law that makes them peculiar it's not that they themselves are peculiar it is the law that they keep which makes them peculiar it's this it's the word that they keep which makes them peculiar now according to these things because we are a peculiar people what we say with our lips and what we do with our actions must be one so you, our children should know. If my parents speak and say this, that is the action they will take. So when the, from when the child is knee high, the child should know in a home there are rules. And the sister Hope is saying, we adapt those rules to the level where they are, just like God adapts the truth to the level where we are. Amen. Where, where we are, God then, he, of course, he's following the law. But he tells us in such a way that we can understand it at the level where we are. We should do the same to our children. So if they mess up, they should know. If I mess up in the home, I should clean. Because the rule in this house, when mom messes up, she cleans. When dad does the same, he cleans. No business of saying, well, we'll wait for mommy to come and do it. You have done it, you clean it. So the child can see that between what you say and the action you do, it's the same thing. And as Sister Hope has already mentioned, when that child grows up to another level, you make those rules. 
And when they break those rules, you let them feel the consequences of breaking the rules. <laughs> so sometimes, saints, you've got to let them get a little bit burning. They should feel the pain of the fire sometimes in some situations. But you do it in such a way that you limit the extent of the fire. So it doesn't consume them completely. But you let them feel it. Then when you take them out, you need to give them an explanation. So that they can understand. If I overstep the boundary of the rules... There are consequences, and one of them, it is painful because it causes me to feel the pain. And that pain is a lesson to them because next time they'll say, I don't want to feel that pain as I felt at that time. Therefore, in this situation, I will obey. Anyway, let me now come to the hands. There was... Uh, I've got three hands. Yes, Brother Tabuda. Uh, good evening. Thank you, uh, Elder Mfeki. I, I came a little bit late, but uh, I don't know whether my contribution is now relevant. But uh, you literally covered most of what I wanted to, to say, uh, that there should be consistency between the parents mm -hmm. in, in, in the way you deal with the children, whether you are showing love, whether you are chastising, whether you are teaching, whether you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, instructing, so there has to be consistency, and that so that uh, the the ch the children will know that if, if they go to the, to their mother or father, there is no difference. And one other crucial thing, which I'm just adding to what you say, is that the relationship between father and mother is also crucial. Because um, children, they pick up those vibes easy. Uh, in every family, there's, it's not uh, ro uh, rosy all the time. But it's how you deal with uh, those situations that will show consistency within yes. the children. And that you, you build them up. And then they will feel the love which they crave for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Sister Charlene. Good evening, thank you. Um, yeah, we can also take it a little bit broader. Uh, the child you know, gets lots of love at home and they see that God is loved through their parents. They should see that in the church too, in the church family. So not just at the home family, but also in the church, because if they are seeing different things as they get older, um, as they're seeing love in the home and, and they go to church and they're not treated well or they see people fighting or are arguing, they're going to think, hey, but what's going on, you know, so it's going to be confusing for them. So we've got to make sure that in the church, well, we can't make sure, obviously, that, you know, can't guarantee, but as a church, we should also try and be a loving family for the child as well. Thank you. Now, now we need to talk about the church things. We need to talk about the church. But let me first go to the Tuckley twins. Yes, that is. Yes, I think Jesus was our example. He came down to our level to uh, to save us, you know, to bring us up to his level. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, that's what you have to do with children if you're trying to teach them. Yeah. Um, if you, you you come you know come down to their level, it's no good being above their heads because they won't learn. You've mm -hmm. got to you've got to make it relevant for them. Yes. Tell it now, that they'll understand. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You <clears throat> come down to the level where they can understand. Now, picking up on that, saints, we want to talk about the church because <clears throat> we have a problem in some of our families. What should you do? So you are giving your child, now we are giving your child rules and the child is obedient. But they go to church and what they hear you saying about God, his word, his promises and everything else, they go to church and they notice something different, which is inconsistent with what you say or inconsistent with what the scriptures say. How should you deal with that with your child? Yes, Brother Tabuda. Um, I think 
when dealing with the church, um, uh, one, I think uh, we, we should not discuss church members okay. in front of the of the children. children. Yeah. We should not. Because once you discuss them, when they go to church, they will, they will go there with a biased view, regardless of what happens there. Okay. And at the times, you know, uh, when they see what is happening in church and what the the principles the parents are trying to uh, promote, if it's not if it does not tie, then you face rebellion uh, both at, at home and in church. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, so so we shouldn't. Okay, somebody else. Unless the church yeah, is so I'm just <laughs> just thinking um uh, what Brother Tabuna said is right because they're only yeah your point of view and the parents might be in the wrong, but okay, they're going to be a, a, a picture of somebody that perhaps Let's isn't say, right, yeah. you know. So it's very okay. important you don't talk you don't talk um, things in front of children. Not, okay. Nothing negative. Nothing negative. Not in the negative. Okay. So let's say let's say what they have seen is correct. But what they have observed and what the scriptures say and what you have told them. They can see the discrepancy. How should you deal with that? So it's, it's not something they have imagined, or it's not something they have created in their own heads or head. They have seen it, and you, as the parent, are aware that this happens, or is aware that has happened. How should you deal with that with your children? So where do you, they, what, are the, what do others think? What are your thoughts then? Go to the scriptures and uh, read what it says about what they've done. So go to the scriptures and then you read so that the child, okay. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? And the church goes quiet. Sister V's just come back in. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, we... I'd sorry, brother. I'd, I'd say not much changes really. I mean, it shouldn't. Um, it should be handled delicately. It should be handled with humility. And um, I mean, we have to appreciate that we now have a child that is noticing. This yeah. and is aware of it so we yes. have to give some credence to that and we have to treat them with some respect that they they understand which means that they've been studying and uh, they've been listening to what yeah. they've been taught and they can see that what somebody's doing is wrong and that they shouldn't be doing it and now they want to ask why and so i think obviously the with a tender, loving, caring um, perspective and attitude, um, you know, the way we speak to them is, is, and like the sister said, you know, we must turn to the scriptures and we must look at it from a biblical perspective and not be opinionated on these people mm -hmm. and do it with a loving caring heart and teach them these principles as well while we're because there, there's a doorway been opened and we can teach them a lot in this as well and how they act and how they respond and how they treat them and um and what's important to uh, thing to do as they're going forward i pray about about mm -hmm. them anybody else before i go to uh, brother Ziambi, anybody else Saints, don't tell me you've never come across children or the last two things we've seen. Uh, perhaps to, uh, 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 Elder, perhaps to add to Brother Paul's as well, mm -hmm. uh, because our children, indeed, they're not foolish. <laughs> they're not foolish. Yeah. They know. They know when we go wrong. So I, I think it's very crucial, as a, as, as a brother was saying, that uh, we, we, we have to be very careful on how we handle it. But most importantly, even when they know that things have gone wrong, bring them back to the, the, the spirit of prayer. 
Mm-hmm. I always believe in prayer. And I believe these children, God hears them so wonderfully as mm-hmm. well. So it's just to break it down to God so that they may understand that even when things happen in church or happen anywhere else, they have to take them to God first, mm. right? And, and that is what we need to teach them uh, um, so that they know, they know. yes, there could be these controversies in the church, there could be issues in the church, and uh, yeah, to bring them to God in prayer. Yes. So bring them to God in prayer. Bring them back to the word. Yes, yes, uh, Brother Yambi. Uh, yes, um, mine is just, just brief snippets here and there. Um, yes, I was going to say, um, if there's a situation like that, uh, there has to be, you have to be humble uh, with love. You have to correct whatever is uh, whatever wrong has been said or done. You have to correct it in a manner so that uh, the, the child will begin to see what's right. I mean, what's right. Mm-hmm. What the, Whatever has been said was wrong, this is the way forward. For as long yes. as, you know, as long as they are directed in that way so that they understand from their parents, because parents, they can, go, uh, can do wrong as well. For as long as it's corrected, then they know what is the truth so that they walk with you. And in in um, in whatever whatever has happened in church, so that it's corrected in love. And as Sister Hope uh, mentioned, that in prayer as well and in scripture. Amen. Amen. So those are some of the things we need to do, saints. We shouldn't deny that the child, what the child, if the if what if 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 especially when we know this is the truth. Let's not try and hide or stay away from it. Let's not try and deny it. Or let's not try and paint a different picture to what other than what the child has already seen, has noticed, and you have noticed it. Accept. But remember, bring it down to a level where they can understand. Then give them the explanation. Using the scriptures as a basis for it. Then when you've done that, you say to the child, let us pray. Why should we pray? Because God will guide and lead us. Then as you pray, claim the promises of Scripture and show them in the Scriptures where you are claiming those promises. Because sometimes, saints, we want to dismiss the children. Then when the kids are by themselves, they talk about those things. when they are by themselves. So we shouldn't be denying if it is something that we know is happening. We should acknowledge, yes, but direct them back to the scripture. Use that opportunity as a learning curve for the child. Teach them what the Bible says of what happens in churches. Then pray with the child. So the child understands there is always prayer, as Sister Hope said. There is always Bible study. And they know what you're teaching them is whatever situation you get to, go back to the word of God, go back to prayer. And in doing those things, you find answers. Yes, Brother Paul. Yes, I totally agree with what you say. What comes to mind is um, when Jesus went back to Nazareth, um, to his 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 homeland, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, because they um, they didn't see him for who he was and didn't appreciate who he was, um, he left without performing any miracles there and healing or what have you because there was no faith there. And if we um, like you just said. If we don't, for instance, we can have a child come to us. I've seen children in church that have sat there and they are just concentrating on an adult sermon and they are they look like they're 10. And so for me, you, we have to appreciate, um, we shouldn't dismiss a child, even if a child is eight or six. It doesn't matter 
the age of the child or our understanding of the capabilities of the child, if the child brings the question or has noticed something, then we should respect mm. that question in itself and not be dismissive that yes. the child isn't worthy of the answer. Because like you say, brother, if that's what we do, then off they pop and they will come to their own conclusions in some other potentially nefarious way. Well, not nefarious, but that that's not going to be biblical. It's not going to be through prayer. It's not going to be under the right circumstances. So I think it's important to make sure that um, that the children, whether because children can just ask questions, they, especially if you see them every week and they get to know you and they're just going to ask. And, and so I think it's important for all adults when they're around children to be aware that we have young adults around us and that these children are, um, they're listening, they're reading the Bible. I mean, there's, there's stuff in there that my brothers and sisters who are not Christian would go absolutely crazy if you were teaching their children that, especially at young ages, they would go absolutely crazy. Some of the stuff that you would be teaching them about Satan and what have you. Uh, so we have to give them some, some credence that they are, they're being taught some really, you know, adult stuff, so to speak. I mean, I, I, I'm, I've sat there watching, waiting for the parents to just take their kids and walk out, but they haven't. And I'm like, wow, amen. That's amazing. It's amazing. And that I'd like to think that there's study. I do pray for these families, and I'd like to think that there's study going on when they get home, that there's questions from the kids about what they've listened to. I, I think that's fantastic to see that and not sitting there scribbling or drawing or running around. Um, I think it's great when the parents have them sitting there and listening to the Word of God, which is exactly what all children should do. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Sister Charlene. Yes, um, I also think that uh, we should point out the sin, but we should also tell the children that, you know, that um, that should, we should also be that that teach them that we should be merciful to those that are making mistakes yeah. because God is merciful towards us. So that mm -hmm. we should teach the children not to condemn the person, condemn the sin, but not the sinner. That's very important, I think. So all those principles, all those things that we, that God is teaching us, we should break them down to the level of our children so that we can explain to them. Right. So sisters, if we can move a little bit up. Is Sister uh, V still there? Sister V. I think it's the Tuttle twins, brother, that have the Tuttle twins that have the control of the screen. Okay. Sister Tuttle, can you move to the next paragraph? Is Sister V still with us? Yes, she is. Okay. Is she on mute? Yeah, okay. All right. She just put text. Yeah, all right, that's fine. Okay, we can see we can see the next paragraph, Saints. This paragraph three. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Says here from a worldly point of view, money is power. But from the Christian's point of view, love is power. Can you give a child all these things, saints? Money. Can you give a child money, love, and... Um, Truth and goodness and happiness all at the same time. I think yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Can you can give a child money? Yes. You can give them love. Mm -hmm. 
Isn't it? Yes. You can give them happiness. Yes, you can give them happiness as well. And you can give them truth. Uh -huh. But it takes sacrifice. Yes. Isn't it? A lot of sacrifice. You put a sacrifice. Mm. Um, For your children. Just remember that love is the integral of the part, uh, plan of salvation. Yes. So love in every sense, you know, that love, you know, which is deep, as we are taught in the Ten Commandments, and you know the Ten Commandments is about love, loving the Lord and loving your neighbor. And we know that um, love is God's character. So in comparison, the love is greater. And uh, if once you give the, uh, your child love, not just um, artificial love, but deep love, it's more valuable than money. Yes. So, Zains, we can give our children these things. But like I say, you cannot give it if you don't have it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you do, you we are back to Matthew 15, 8. The one we were reading, you know, the one we were reading about, they speak with their own Near, they draw near close to me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. The Pharisees. This can only be done by somebody who he or herself is being taught by Christ. Okay. Now, let's go to the next passage. Sisters, can we move? Yes, that one. Yeah, this one. Home is to be the center of the purest and most elevated affection. Peace, harmony, affection, and happiness should be perseveringly cherished every day until these precious things abide in the hearts of those who compose the family. Who should take the first step here, saying? Let's take in a family. Who should take the first step? Or, or let me put it this way. In a family, who's, is, who is responsible for this? Parents. The parents, yes. Anybody else? Husband, mostly. The husband? Yeah. Why the husband? Because he's the priest of the family. He's the priest? Yeah, very good. He's the priest of the home. So, it is his job to make sure this is done in the home, isn't it? So it is. <laughs> so if, the, if this is the duty of the husband, where would the husband have peace, harmony, affection, and happiness? Where should he demonstrate that? Because this plant must, this plant of love must be carefully nourished, else it shall die. Who should he nourish it with? His partner. Right. So he starts. He starts with his wife. Then from the wife, it goes down to the children. So if you're a husband. You have a duty to love your wife like nobody else does. <laughs> You've got to love that wife of yours. Because she that's the one you went and said, I do. Now when she's in the home, you can't say, I do not do. So you have to nourish that love with your wife like nobody's business. You can't go and drink from other systems. You have to drink from your own well. That is what you need to do. In your own home, children should see that in our home, there is love in the home. And that love is demonstrated by the dad and the parents and the mom. And it comes to the children. 
That's the home. But the dad can only do that if he is connected to Christ. So as long as you are a parent and you are connected to Christ, you can have this, you can nourish, carefully nourish this plant of life. Why? Because the Bible tells us in verse John chapter 4, God is love. So outside of God, you cannot love. So. And in that love, there is always the element of sacrifice. So we need to make sure, why should be our homes, why should it be in our homes, peaceful, harmony, affection, and happiness? Why should we persevere? When it says we should perseveringly cherish, what does that mean, Zain? When spirit of prophecy is using the word persevere here, what do you think it means? Work at it. You got to work at it. It's going to take time, since. It's going to take effort. It's going to take tears. It's going to take pain. It's going to take uh, the strain of every fiber and muscle of your being to do this. Why? Why should we do it, saints, like that? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Let's read it again. Twelve seventeen, yeah. And somebody go to Ephesians chapter six, verse twelve. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. testimony of Jesus Christ. The remnant. Yeah. Can we go also go to Ephesians chapter six? Verse 12. Or oh, we do not wrestle uh, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Now, saints, these two passages are telling us what we are up against. And who it is we are up by. We know who it is we are up against, and we know what is the target is the remnant. In the remnant, there are families, and in the families, he's fighting. Why does he have to fight the families? Because <laughs> why is he fighting the families? Because for us to have uh, healthy churches, it all starts by us having healthy families. Yes. Yeah. So the devil is trying very hard to attract our families so that uh, the church also can suffer. Yes. These two you things. Call up. And uh, then the family things. It just takes us back to today's South Kuleso when we were talking about the divorced families and how we should treat uh, uh, children in our churches and in our homes. So you can see that God, uh, God from the beginning, he loved children mm -hmm. and he loved family. And uh, <laughs> he also loved the Sabbath. That's why these two things, Sabbath and families, you can't separate them. Mm -hmm. Because you see at the end of this world, there are those two that are being heavily attacked because it, uh, the devil hates them, both of them. He hates the Sabbath and he hates the family. Mm -hmm. So he's attacking them. 
Who is he going to attack in the family? Who is his main target in the family? The head. <laughs> the head is after the head. So, Saint, what does that remind you of? If we say he's attacking the head, what does that remind you of in the Bible? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Exactly. We are back there now, Saint. This is where we are back at. So, if you are the head, what should you then do? Knowing that you're up against, you're doing your fighting flesh and blood. Knowing that the dragon is wrath, wrath with the remnant and you are part of it. What should you be doing? Sir? What are some of the things you should be doing? Sir? So that this stays, because we are, still, we are being told it's persevering. And we've said you've got to work at it, you've got to take effort. It takes effort, it's a strenuous effort. What should you be doing things every day in your home? We should guard jealously ahead. about huh? we should guard jealously about our praying time with our family, you know. Yeah. Like uh, uh like in the morning, maybe in the afternoon or in the evening, when you come from work in the night time. We should have a special time to pray with our family. Apart from us, uh, husbands, praying for ourselves, uh, we should have that special time. And this time, we should guard it jealously. Yes. We should not trade it with anything. Because uh, Ellen White, she's saying that uh, prayer should be a great prayer for our life. If she's saying that, she knows what she's saying. Uh, mm -hmm. How many times do I pray? which means we have to pray constantly. The moment we stop to pray, that's when the devil attacks. You know? Okay. Yeah. That means you as the head. If you are the head in your family, it means, saints, you've got to pray like nobody's business. You must have time you pray for your family and for you to have wisdom to lead the family that you are leading. You must, you must have Bible studies, personal Bible studies yourself. You must have personal Bible studies yourself so that you understand the scriptures yourself so that you can lead the family that God has given you in the way of the Lord yourself. Don't wait to go to church to hear the pastor or the elder say, well, they'll teach me when I get to church. No, this is not it, saints. This is you doing this yourself. All together, saints. Because you are the, you are the one with the crosshairs on your back. So you can't wait to go to church and say, well, when I go to church, I'll ask the elder or I'll ask the pastor or I'll ask in Sabbath school. You've got to study it. If you can't understand it, saints, ask the Holy Spirit. He's the one who wrote the Bible. He will tell you. He will teach you. This is a persevering effort, saints. That means it's strenuous. There is effort required. It's painful. But you have to do it still moving forward. It is said the Christian walk is a battle and a march forward. And that battle and march begins in the home with you as the head praying for those whom God has put under your responsibility. Because when you get there, God is going to ask you for the responsibility he has given you. You remember when he gave the, the parable of the talents? One was given five, one was given one, one was given, and, and they, they all asked, what have you done with what I gave you? You have to be able to demonstrate. I did what I, I did everything you commanded me to do. And this is what I managed to produce. So if you are a parent, not only I hear the crosshairs of the devil and all his evil angels, 
you also have to overcome your own carnal nature so that you pray, you make the necessary sacrifice. That's why in Romans chapter 12, uh, I think 1 and 2 says, a living sacrifice. We must be a living sacrifice. Not conformed to this world, but a living sacrifice. So if we are going to show love to our children, say, and, our, and our homes are to be a foretaste of heaven, it means the inhabitants of that home <coughs> must be a people who are being led by godly leaders, godly mothers, godly fathers. Amen. It's quarter past eight cents. I think we can stop here and then next week we'll continue and finish the verse, finish the chapter. Because you see that passage says, that which Satan plants in the heart Evil, envy, jealous, evil surmising, evil speaking, impatience, prodigious, selfishness, and covetousness, and vanity must be uprooted. If you don't fight this battle, as we have just been saying, this the enemy will do in your own house while you are there. So let's fight this battle on our knees in Bible study as leaders of families. And let's take the responsibility that God has given us by putting others under our responsibility. It is a God-given responsibility for God to put somebody under your responsibility. From when they are helpless to when they are able to stand on their own two feet, it is a God-given responsibility. Let's take that responsibility seriously. Because one day, you will be asked about that responsibility. What have you done with what I gave you? What will be your answer? I didn't have time because I was, I was watching a documentary. I was watching the Olympics. Will that be your reason? Or oh, I didn't have time because I've got, I, I had too, much, too many other things to do. No. We are fighting against, not against flesh and blood but spiritual wickedness in high places. The dragon is wroth with the remnant, with those who keep the commandments of God. He is angry with them. So. so let's take our responsibility seriously. If there's no other comment or state of question, can we have a volunteer to give us a closing prayer? Uh, just a quick comment, Eona. Mm. Uh, I think if we find time, those of us uh, who are on prayer retreat ministry, if we can watch uh, the message that was preached yesterday, uh, uh, Elder Chigogola preached about this message very well. Uh, you can, if you go, uh, if you go back to the prayer retreat uh, ministry chat, mm. Mm. Uh, it was posted around. Uh, uh, 13 minutes to 7 1847 so if you can watch that message it's exactly what we were studying now what he was preaching mm -hmm. the message was entitled repairing the water the water within SDF families I watched it today it was it was a very interesting message thank you so if we find yeah. time let's let's watch it yes here's a resource another resource you can add to your you know, weapon resigns. Anybody else? Because as we live now, saints, as we live from today moving forward, we, <clears throat> we have learned something today of the responsibility that we have. Anybody else has a comment or a question saying this is the saints? Let me tell you this. this. You see what is happening in this world. Especially for you and I who are living here in the West. We can see how things are turning. 
So when we come to Bible study and are studying these things, eh, let's not waste that moment. Because soon and very soon, we will be trying to do this and they will not allow us to do it. So when we are doing these things, eh, let's make it serious. Let's take it serious. If you have perplexities or questions that are you have and scriptures that are serious, you just can't get your head around it and we are studying these things. Bring them so we can discuss and study together. So we are all enlightened and we are not left in confusion or perplexities. That's why these platforms are there to learn. Sir. Because one day we may not have a platform. We may not be having a situation where we can come together and gather and study. You see the laws they are passing about the internet. Things you can post and you can't post. Soon the internet will be closed. So let's take these moments in saints and be serious and study. Anyway, let's have a volunteer to give us a closing prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us in this uh, powerful session that we've had, this study. Lord, we ask that you please continue to guide us in your word to Continue to protect the family unit. Continue to guide them, Lord, into your word where we see that the sword of the Holy Spirit is the word of God, which means it is our sword. It is our defense. As we see in Ephesians 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, where we should put on the whole armor of God that we may be fit to fight off the wiles of Satan and the darts of the demons. <clears throat> and may we pray consistently. May we endeavor to bring everything to you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you please continue to watch over us as we depart. Continue to be with us and protect us as we go to our beds or we go to our families. Please give us the characteristics of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, that we be charitable, that we be loving, we be kind and caring to each other. Lord, we thank you for another Sabbath, which has just closed in the UK. at least. Lord, we thank you for another blessed Sabbath day. We thank you for being with us and guiding us. And we thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy that you bestow upon us each and every minute of every day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a very good night, Amen. saints. Uh, uh, until we meet tomorrow morning at uh, 4.45. Is that so, sisters? And then at 6 o'clock. Yes. Yes. Have a good night, saints. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet tomorrow. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.